Comparison of the La Paz ART versus Manila LRT. Part 2 of 2. Addressing the perception of low capacity in an ART. In this chapter video, we will discuss the second major criticism of Filipinos on ART. Low capacity. Many Filipinos laugh or deride an ART primarily because of its low cabin and system capacity. This table shows that a BRT bus has 10 times more passenger capacity than an ART cabin. Remarkably, both have about the same system capacity of about 4,500 passengers per hour per direction. This table shows that an LRT train has 160 times more passenger capacity than an ART cabin. Remarkably, an LRT has only four times more in system capacity. The four times higher system capacity of an LRT over an ART does not degrade the usefulness of an ART. ART serves medium demand transit corridors, while LRT serves high demand transit corridors. Both complement instead of compete with each other. The importance of ART in a multimodal transportation system in a city can be appreciated by correlating its role to a road network in a city. The road network of a city usually employs a hierarchy of roads starting from wider roads down to narrower roads. These are expressways, primary roads, secondary roads, and then tertiary roads. In a road network of a city, the route with the highest demand for car travel may be served by an expressway with eight lanes. As the demand becomes lower, the number of lanes can go down to six lanes, then four lanes, and finally two lanes for residential roads. In a mass transportation network of a city, the route with the highest demand for passenger travel may be served by a subway or an LRT. As the demand becomes lower, a lower capacity mode of transport may be used such as an ART. For an even lower demand, standard city buses are used. If an LRT is installed in a medium demand transit corridor, the owner or investor will incur money losses. If an ART is installed in a high demand transit corridor, there will be long lines of passengers waiting for a ride. An ART is not really that low capacity as Filipinos perceive it to be. It transports the equivalent of 225 jeepneys per hour per direction. This is equivalent to four jeepneys passing by a jeepney stop every one minute. Or this is the equivalent of one jeepney passing by a jeepney stop every 16 seconds. An example of a high-capacity transport placed in an area of moderate passenger demand is the Manila LRT-2. According to Wikipedia, the LRT-2 is designed and was forecasted to carry 570,000 passengers daily. However, the line operates under its designed capacity since its opening in 2003. Before the pandemic, the line had a ridership of 200,000 passengers. This is only 35% of its designed capacity. ART versus LRT To counter doubts and negative perceptions of an ART, a comparative performance analysis can be made between the La Paz ART and the Manila LRT2. Already adjusted for inflation, the cost per kilometer of LRT2 is 3.1 times more than that of the La Paz ART. Yet, the La Paz ART network has two times more stations than the Manila LRT2. Shown in circles are the 26 stations of the La Paz ART. In comparison, the much more expensive LRT2 only has 13 stations. The covered distance of 31 kilometers is two times longer than LRT2, of only 18 kilometers. Its daily ridership of 300,000 is 1.5 times more than that of LRT2. 
the 200,000 daily ridership of LRT2 is far less than the forecasted capacity of 570,000 passengers per day. Its record daily ridership of 580,000 is two times more than that of LRT2. This is a comparative chart of the daily and record ridership of the La Paz ART and LRT2. The cheaper ART has a daily ridership of 300,000 as compared to only 200,000 of LRT. ART has a record daily ridership of 580,000 as compared to only 280,000 of LRT. The La Paz ART is very young at an average of only 7 years old. Its daily ridership could increase from 300,000 to 500,000 in the future, and its record ridership could increase from 580,000 to 700,000 in the future. This is an incredible ridership performance for a mass transport system that is much cheaper when compared to other systems. This is a comparative chart of the linear growth of daily ridership of Manila's LRTs and the La Paz ART. ART is the clear winner as shown by the steeper slope. This is despite being only one-third the cost of LRTs. The pre-COVID record daily ridership of the La Paz ART is 580,000. The current ridership of LRT1 at 500,000, accomplished in 20 years, is lower. Because the average age of the La Paz ART is only 7 years old, it can have a daily ridership of 500,000 in a lesser number of years than LRT1. What this chart shows is that although ART is a medium-capacity transport system, it is so efficient that it can approach or exceed the ridership of higher-capacity transport systems. In the following slides, we will show how the age of a mass transportation system increases ridership using the La Paz ART and LRT2 as an example. These are the locations of the 26 La Paz ART stations and the 13 Manila LRT2 stations. LRT2 stations attract business establishments that will provide increased ridership. An example is the Katipunan Underground Station of LRT2. After the completion of LRT2 in 2003, there were no major construction activities around the station for a while. Four years later, in 2007, high-rise buildings started to sprout until 2024. There are now nine high-rise buildings surrounding the station. The same can be observed around the 26 stations of La Paz ART. This is an example of developments around the central station. This is a satellite photo before the station was built in 2013. The station and red line was completed more than a year later. This is now the photo in 2024 of the station that was completed in 2014. Since 2014, numerous improvements or new buildings can be observed around the station. This is one of the reasons why the La Paz ridership continues to increase consistently and significantly. Let us show again this illustration of the underutilization of LRT2. Its daily ridership of 200,000 is much less than the forecasted capacity of 570,000 despite being 21 years old. The LRT2's ridership will significantly increase with the completion of the ongoing Manila subway and PNR rehabilitation. After having completed the LRT2 East Extension in 2021, this LRT2 West Extension will be completed soon. LRT2 will be connected at this subway LRT2 interchange, PNR LRT2 interchange, and potential Tutuban LRT2 interchange. In summary, ART has many advantages over LRT in many aspects. In a cost-benefit analysis, the La Paz ART wins by a wide margin over LRT2.
With its proven record since it was first installed in 2004, it should be considered as an option to address a transportation demand along medium-capacity corridors. Having demonstrated the efficiency of ART, it is now easier for Filipinos to appreciate the capabilities of an ART compared to other modes of transport. The ability of ART to provide high ridership at lower capital and operating costs will generate more profits to the owner of the facility. This will attract the government to fund the project internally through the national budget or official development assistance. This will attract the private sector to invest in the project such as the PPP program of the government. Additional incentives such as in taxation and in land use rights may be provided to further increase the attractiveness of the project. Anyway, the ART facility will be owned by the government after the concession period of 25 to 35 years.